Hey everybody ah. and welcome back to part two of our scouting ah. series. So I gotta admit the first video turned out ah. kind of awesome. If you haven't seen it, go check it out right now. Ah. It's gonna catch you up to speed with where we're currently kind of stuck. Trying to ah. cross a river. So yeah, ah. we're gonna take you guys on the rest of our adventure. Join us right now for the rest of our scouting series. Ah. I sent the others that way. Holy crap. We almost fell down into this. Are you actually feeling confident about this? I think we got about a 30% chance of it working. What? Why aren't we Why turning are we around then? Do you guys, that's like... Not high. 10? Not high at all. Not high. What's that noise? Are you trying to get it to four wheel low? It doesn't want to. <laughs> I'm freaked out, man. This is stressing me out. I don't want to get stuck in the river. <laughs> Lord Jesus, please help us. Please help us. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. <laughs> oh yeah, we got it. Oh my gosh, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. Holy crap. <laughs> We're awesome. Thirty percent is great. <laughs> How you do it? The fifth location was literally just a pit stop where some of the people in our group were like, hey, we want to stop and give water to everyone. It's been a long drive. Let's just kind of take a break. And it was really cool because at some point during this drive, I was looking out the window going, the layers of these colors on these hills are just super duper cool. And it's just such a pretty environment. And I thought flying around here would be really, really neat, but there wasn't really spots to pull over. Luckily, nobody else was on this road except for our group. So it kind of made sense to just go ahead and pull over. So we did. We didn't necessarily plan on flying, but then Claude from our group just walked out to the cliff's edge and started flying her Catalina Macaw YOLO. And so we all were just kind of like, well, if she's doing it, we all kind of want to be doing it. And what a nice little break for the birds. And so we all ended up flying here and it was just really, really fun because the background of these amazing maroon colored hills. And it's definitely not a spot that I would say we need to go back to our pit stop location, but it was nice to enjoy along the way. Good job. Fox is like, last one in the air wins. Good job. Good baby. Good job, Alex. Why did she do this? Oh, what did Fox call her? She's turning. Oh. <laughs> How long ago did we start the drive? 9.30? AM? Yeah. Yeah. On this one road. <laughs> oh, we've been on one road? Like seven hours. For like seven hours. <laughs> this is crap. Uh, this is crap. Uh, they love scouting. Seven hours. We made it out. That's all it took. Seven it's hours. Weird. I don't know if I'm more proud of you or my car today. <laughs> Our sixth location is actually a location you might recognize from previous videos. We graduated a little Cape parrot called Noah here. And so this is kind of one of our go-tos in this area. We really like this level one location for brand new flyers. So as you can see, I'm taking Ava, the nine-year-old blue-throated macaw out. She is a beginner flyer because she spent a lot of her life clipped. Uh, she's never been a free-flighted bird. So we're just working on really simple A to B and this was a nice location because we all knew that we could pull over, get the birds out and fly. It's really easy to get to. We can get our bird trailer here, no problem. There's plenty of space to turn around. And we were able to even get Olivia, our little green cheek conure out. We're able to fly our sun conures. Everybody was able to fly here. Even advanced flyers can have a lot of fun here, especially if we get a little bit more wind. But it was nice just to get the birds out who don't necessarily get to get out at the trickier locations and give them some time. 
Location number seven was pretty much the same sort of thing. We've previously scouted this location. We absolutely love this Goblin Valley location. It is just so cool. Um, and we did it a little bit differently this year. All the previous years we've been down in the valley and flying and the birds can kind of play hide and seek and it's super duper cool to be on the goblins. But this time I just really had this goal of flying above the valley. I just wanted the valley of goblins to be in the background sort of of everything. And so you can see we went into the middle of the valley and then we climbed up this big hill and we were able to fly off of the top of this hill. And it's super cool because no matter what wind direction you're getting, you can just turn and make it work for you. So it ended up just being awesome. It was exactly what I wanted and imagined out of this spot this time and was a great way to just sort of change up a location that we've been to frequently. So we randomly saw this location and liked it because of this white rock background. But what do you think about it? Well, I kind of want to go check it out without being a creeper. But... Yeah, let's go look on the other side. Cool campsites. If it was windy, it'd be nice. If it was windy, yeah. Uh, you can kind of come out over here. I don't know if it looks like anything amazing though. It's not blowing my mind. I think it'd be fun, like, in general, but not with, probably not right now. You want to keep looking? Probably. The winds aren't really favorable. Yeah, we would have to be flying this way, not into this canyon. Yeah. And it's not, it feels like a low payoff. Yeah. Okay, let's keep looking then. Not impressed. We're going to keep going. We've seen better holes before. We've seen better. <laughs> Okay, so we were driving and I saw this little dune area and I thought, what the heck? Let's just fly it real quick. Looks cool. So, and we haven't got Tusa yet out today, so I'm gonna fly him here. And there's no footprints in it. Nice. So I personally love flying at dunes. This is a very minimal, tiny little dune and we were all hungry, so hence the name Danish Dune. <laughs> we were just talking about food. This location was super cool for Tusa who really enjoys A to Bs. He likes flying in crosswinds. It's just really cool. It wasn't anything crazy spectacular, not a sort of location that I would say, hey, we need to go back to, but a nice location, again, to be able to get the advanced birds out more and also beginner birds out out at all just because we hadn't got them out as much since locations were pretty advanced. So just kind of a cool little varied up location. I'm a huge fan of dunes. I know a lot of my free flight students are definitely not. They might have a little PTSD from me taking them up and down dunes, but this one was tiny. So I don't even know if it would count as a dune so much as sand. So Claude found this little spot last night and it looks pretty cool. I think it'd be amazing with a little bit more wind. Um, but I would put this between a level three and a four where it would be difficult to recover, not impossible. And you might need some special equipment if you had to go climbing or take a helicopter over there, but beautiful spot. Um, obviously water can go through here during flash flood season. You can tell by the greenery. So that means that there's a higher likelihood for predator birds. Not a huge concern though, cause we are pretty much out in the middle of nowhere and any predator birds that are used to hunting here are probably used to a specific food that they're constantly eating. So anyway, if we had a little bit more wind, I think it'd be way more fun, but we're gonna have some fun anyway.
never learned. <laughs> up you! Good, good job! Up you! Up you! Go! Good job! Good job. Good job. <laughs> So this actually ended up being one of my favorite locations other than this plane came in and actually landed close to where we were and did send one of the birds in our group on a little bit of a panic flight, but she was able to get through it, come right back. So it was a great desensitization moment for her, great element of training. But yeah, this location we just need to keep in mind in the future is actually a landing zone for some planes. So just making sure that your bird is okay with that <laughs> <laughs> what is that <laughs> i know baby <laughs> Hi, I'm Claude. Uh, you last saw me on my first free flying trip with YOLO and now I'm back on a scouting trip. A scouting trip is different than your average free flying trip because, well, I found it more fun is one thing. Um, and we just drive around, explore, and then we stop when we see a place that could be a good spot to fly. Uh, and then we let the birds have fun. Uh, so I've really loved it so far. What I've learned so far about a scouting trip is that uh, well, you never know when you're going to come back. You go <laughs> and you probably could use a 4x4 car, but you can do it with other car. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Yellow's yeah. like, you know what? I've had enough of this talking. Let's do more doing. The location we're at right now is a location I found, so I scouted. Um, I was just exploring, we were done for the day yesterday, but it's so beautiful around that I just did what I think Jamie and Dave do, which is go down roads that seem like it might be interesting, and then sometimes you find nothing, and sometimes you find like these amazing places, which has been awesome to come back to this morning. The next location we went to was actually found by Sheila, which was super cool. And she went down a road that had been on my list. So I loved that we were on the same page there and attracted to the same roads. So we went down. One of the cool things about doing a scouting trip is that some of our flight students have had the opportunity to find some of their own locations. So the last one we just went to, Claude had found. And today this location is a spot Sheila found. So if it sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But what made you find this place and, and what were you, what made you realize like, hey, this would be cool? Um, well, I was looking for um, just, you know, somewhere where there was something for the birds to fly off of. Um, I like this spot for my birds because they're not quite at the level of the last location. But this, I have no, no worries about sending them. Um, so... Yeah, I think it's cool because we have a lot of spots where we can have vantage points. So behind Jamie up here, <clears throat> there's... A spot where we could be standing so if a bird goes to the other side of that we have a good vantage <laughs> spot so we can see if a bird goes down over there i love it and i love that sheila's thinking we should fly off of here and you immediately were like we should fly off of there <laughs> <laughs> so it just kind of shows the variety in the location yeah cool let's do it yeah we need to find althea you and i need to find a spot ready one two three <laughs> I love Grace. Woo! Woo! I love you. The cool thing about this location that Sheila found is you could fly down below and just send the birds, which is what we did with Cressy and the Conyers and some of the macaws. We could work with Sam, who's an older macaw and is just sort of working on A to Bs. He doesn't do a lot of exploratories on purpose yet. Um, and so it's a great spot down below to sort of be able to work with those beginner birds. You can see us working with Ava here in the road and it's relatively flat, but then behind Dave, it's actually a really cool location and you can climb up. So I loved the variety in this spot. You could pick and choose and all birds were sort of capable in using a certain area of this location and that rock behind dave you can see people climbing up the from our group you can see dave helping capri here we were hiking with our backpacks that we carry our birds in it was super cool way to get cressy and bondi our gray and cockatoo up there and we were able to fly them off the top of the rock which was super fun so you can see we have a great vantage point they're able to dive down and play again because we're at the top we can turn any direction that we need to to accommodate the wind direction which is just such a cool position to be in we also found this spot that was further back 
and higher. And we actually flew the macaws here and it was super fun because all the macaws like to fly around the huge rocks. So they would actually go here and just do a big loop. And it was just super cool because all of them got to fly together and they would go out of sight for a little bit and then come back from the other side where you can see that we turned around to catch them. And it was just a lot of variety in this location. Again, depending on what the wind was doing, you could just move a few feet and throw them off a different direction or send them off a, of a different direction. And it just became a cool spot. Just tons of variety, tons of options. And those are the locations we really love. And that was only three days of our scouting trip. Out of a week. Still think you want to be one of our flight students? Yeah, I hope you have a four-wheel drive vehicle <laughs> and a tow strap and extra tires and a radio. Check out video number three. Coming up soon. Thank you.